So far, in the course of Ansible for Cisco Network Engineers, we have seen Ansible being used in monitoring and troubleshooting with both raw modules and Cisco specific modules. But Ansible's power lies mostly in Ansible Playbook. Therefore, from now on, we will mainly be using Ansible Playbooks. For our first example, we want to use an Ansible Playbook to get backups of Cisco devices. It's a good idea to backup of all your network devices with different vendors like Cisco and Juniper and different appliances like Switch, Rotor and Firewall with Ansible at the same time. It seems that all of your infrastructure is now classified in just one code, so called infrastructure as code or IAC and you can restore the whole infrastructure with just one click with running Ansible Playbook. In this section, I will back up Cisco devices using two modules. In the first module, I use show running config command with iOS command module and also some other Linux modules like file module, to create a directory, Linux command module to run the copy command, to copy the result of show running config in the created directory. This method is not recommended as a whole, but it will work for different vendors and devices that don't have a specific parameters or modules for getting backup. In the second method, I will be using iOS config module and certain embedded backup parameters to make the backup as easy as possible. This method works just for the vendors and devices that give you such option. I know that Juniper devices also have this option like Cisco since I have already implemented in real network. You can download my playbooks that I use in this video from my github repository with the following address. Now let's see how we create a playbook in Ansible. Rather than theoretically explaining how playbooks are made, let's take a look at our first real playbook and explain various components of that playbook before we run and see the result. So nano backup yaml now you see that playbooks are in yaml format so they start with three dashes which are the characteristic and the sign of yaml files then it has a list of plays the component of list in the yaml file are indicated with a dash our playbook list contains just one component and therefore just one play. Each play runs on a different set of managed nodes. In other words, if you get backup of Cisco and Juniper devices in a different way and different task, so you will need two plays one for Cisco devices and one for Juniper devices but in this video we have got just one play for backuping from Cisco devices don't forget that indentation is very important in YAML file as I've explained in previous videos in general indentation is identified as zero or more space characters at the start of a line that means every block must have the same space length from the beginning of the line for example all these lines from the same block have the same space length from the beginning of the line the suggested syntax for yaml file is to use just two space for indentation in every block but YAML will follow whatever indentation systems that the individual file 
uses. For example, you can use three spaces or four spaces, but it's not recommended to use tab since it's different uh, in uh, different uh, um, operating system or modules. Every play has three main sections, header, variables, and tasks. The most important parameter in header is host, where we specify the list of managed devices through which this playbook should be performed. We don't need gather fact parameter here and in this playbook. So I have set the value to false. I just wrote here to explain you how we can use this parameter and what is the application of this parameter. As you saw in the last video, you use gather facts to collect metadata information from managed nodes. You set the value of gather facts to use when your tasks are based on information gathered. For example, suppose you want to run a task differently when the managed node operating system is iOS or Jonas. So you can write tasks that behave differently based on gathered fact information. If it is operating system, for example, is Jonas or iOS. We will see in the future how conditions for example, the condition of operating system are written in playbook. With connections, we indicate the connection type, which for network engineers is usually local or network CLI. If you are using network CLI as the connection type, don't forget to set the Ansible network OS parameter in the configuration file or in the inventory file, as we did in the previous video. Let's check again. No, no, pass, YAML, Ansible, Network OS, and Ansible, connection. In the variable section of the playbook, we define variables that are to be used in the task. We have a special video to show how we can create variables in Ansible in different ways. Here, I have defined two variables. The backup root variables, which is the name of the folder that we create in one task and where our backups are stored. The second variable is the CLI variable, which contains the information needed to connect to devices like username, password, and if we need the enable mode or authorization mode or not. I've already defined this variable in host inventory file. These variables are already defined in the previous videos. But the variables defined in playbook have a higher priority as we will see in the future videos. And the third section of the playbook is for the tasks. Each task uses a specific module. For example, here iOS command, here file, here file, here Linux command, here copy. First task use iOS command module to run show running config on devices. The output of this task is saved in config variable through the register Ansible command. We connect to the device and run this command through the CLI variable with provider parameter defined in this module. And we have already seen in the previous videos here, for example, iOS command, and provide a parameter for connecting to the devices. The second and the third task use Linux file module to create a backup root directory and also subfolder for each managed node. 
The first task use Linux command module to get the time of the running Ansible playbook. And saving the output in timestamp variable. And the final task use copy module which copies the saved config to the appropriate subfolder with a predefined time stamp. Now that we have explained the all component of the playbook, we can test our playbook with Ansible playbook command. So Ansible playbook backup. Notice that the color of these outputs are yellow and one output is green. Let's check folder backups, ls backups, and then the subfolder for every managed node, for example, CSR1, and then the backup of the running config with the time stamp. Let's run the playbook once again. Now you can see that the first three sections of the output are green, and the fourth section is yellow, and the, and the last section is also green. And if you check the backups folder, you can see the output of the backup. This is the configuration of CSR1. As you can see, in the output of running Ansible playbooks, it is sometimes green and sometimes yellow. Green means no changes and yellow means changes. This is due to a capability in Ansible module called idempotency. If a module is idempotent in Ansible, it means that after one iteration of running a playbook, to get things into a desired state, further iteration of the same playbook should change nothing. Now we do the same task with another playbook, with only one task. Nano backup one YAML. And with the help of Cisco iOS config module Ansible. In this module, we have a certain parameter to get backup of devices easily. Just we say to get backup, backup yes, and give the credential to connect to the devices. The backup files are written automatically inside the backup folder. If the directory does not exist, it is automatically created. Let's check it. RM backups and we run the second playbook backup one YAML. I run once again. You see, uh, the both output are yellow. That means there is some changes in the output of the running Ansible playbook. So check it. LS backups backup. So we have got here two backups uh, from CSR1 with different timestamp and two CSR2 config backup with different time stamps. You have seen that it's very easier from the previous playbook what we have used actually embedded argument or parameter of the iOS config module. In the next video we will take a closer look at the used modules.